Hi everyone! In this video, I would like to show how we can create a shader that works like a fisheye camera or deforms part of the image using a magnifying glass. The shader will be fully configurable, uh, so we'll be able to adjust the magnifying glass's radius, the level of distortion, or crop the edge to simulate looking through a peephole in a door. Let's get started! So, as usual, I will create a new 2D scene in Godot 4 and add an image to it, one that I often used in previous tutorials, which is a screenshot from our game. By the way, the mentioned game, Whispers of Prague, is already available on Steam, so if you'd like to support this channel and the creation of more tutorials, you can purchase the game and its soundtrack. But back to today's topic. We'll make the scene as I just mentioned. So here it is, uh, scenes, right click, create new scene, and I will call it, I don't know, fisheye. Yeah, that's a good name, okay. And now let's uh, drag the texture into the scene. So we automatically got this uh, sprite to the node and in the inspector, Let's fix the offset, it shouldn't be centered, and the transform, reset the position. Now it's perfect. Great, and of course we need to create a new shader material in the material section. New shader material, click, and new shader, which we can call a fish eye, of course, canvas item, and let's put it to the shaders folder. Open and create and click to open it in the editor. All right, so I'll start by adding the uniform parameters I mentioned at the beginning of the video. This will include the coordinates of the effects uh, center, the level of distortion and the effects radius. Let's start here and first of all, of course, let's delete the vertex and light functions as we don't need them. Okay, so uniform parameter, uh, vector tool, center in 2D, center, and let's put it, uh, sorry, vector tool 0.5. All right, uh, since we are working with normalized UV coordinates, uh, the point 0, 0 is at the top left corner and 1, 1 at the bottom right. So if I create a vector with both uh, components 0. 0.5, we are exactly at the center of the image. Okay, the second one would be this uniform, eh, uniform float. Let's call it power and give it a hint range and initial value 1 and the hint range, let's make it from 0.1 to 10 with a step 0.01. Why is that? Notice that the range starts from 0.1, not from 0 as usual. This is because we'll be dividing by this value in the following calculations, and dividing by 0 wouldn't make sense. And the third parameter, uniform float radius, Again, with a hint range and initial value, value, I think I set it to 0.3. And this time we can make it from 0 to 1 with uh, uh, 0 0.01 as the step. So this is simply the radius of the effect. Given the UV coordinates, uh, it wouldn't make sense to use values higher than 1, as the effect would exceed the dimensions of our image. And now for the code. This time we'll only need the fragment function because the calculation itself isn't difficult and will only take a few lines. But first, we'll do some preparatory work as we'll need the image resolution to calculate the aspect ratio so that our magnifying glass remains perfectly circular. I will delete this uh, generated comment and let's write the code. So it would be a vector 2, UV is 
uv. Note that this time we are not uh, subtracting 0.5 because it's not necessary to move the origin to the center. It can stay at the top left corner. All right, and now the resolution. So vector 2, resolution. As you know from previous videos, we can easily calculate it from the texture pixel size internal variable. So it's inver inverse of this variable. And now to calculate the aspect ratio itself. So first aspect UV would be UV. And now we will adjust the X coordinate. Aspect UV dot X is multiplied by resolution X divided by resolution Y. Again, if you uh, saw previous tutorials, you probably know this trick. I use it almost uh, everywhere. And we will need the same for the magnifying glass effect. So let's do it vector 2. I will call it I UV for the fish eye. Is center, uh, center, which is our uniform parameter we created here. So by default, it will be placed at the center of the screen. And again, we can do this calculation. Let's just copy paste and change it to I UV. Great. And now for the required image distortion, which will result in the typical fish eye effect. First, we need the distance of the current pixel from the center of the effect. I will call it just dist float. Dist is internal function distance of I UV and aspect UV. Okay, so we'll get the distance for every pixel that is included in this image and then calculate if it's included in the fish eye effect or not and how distorted it should be. Okay, next, next comes the calculation of distortion based on the distance. It will look like a view through a glass ball and we know that the image distorts differently at the edges of the ball compared to near its center. So let's call it warp and use the power function to calculate this uh, distortion. So it would be distance divided by the radius and the argument of the power, let's make it five. So to the power of five. All right, and finally, the level of magnification, which we will then use to offset the UV coordinates to produce the final effect. Float uh, mag factor uh, would be, again, the power function of the warp value and now the inverse value of the power. This is the division I was talking about. This is the reason why this uh, range is from point uh, one and not from zero. Okay, and now for the actual rendering. It will only make sense to apply the distortion where the current pixel is within the set radius of the effect. So we'll do it like this. If dist is less than radius, so we are inside the effect, then let's do this uv would be increased by the mag factor multiplied by the difference of center and our current uv coordinates of the current pixel i mean okay and finally let's use this uv coordinates to display the pixel so color would be function texture from our texture and UV. Wait for it. Okay, great. We have something here and we can try out the center movement. Yeah, it's doing something and we can also change the power and the radius. Cool. But, 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 but what? However, we can see that the distortion isn't quite right and resembles a view through a soap bubble rather than a glass ball. 
we need to make some adjustments to the definition of the variable warp, this one. First, to bring the center of distortion to the center of the ball, we'll subtract the calculation from 0.5, like this, 0.5 minus the power. OK, that's much better, but we have some black ring around the effect. This is caused by the fact that the warp value can now reach negative values at the edges, resulting in this black color. We'll get rid of it by clamping the values to the range of 0 to 1. So let's use the function clamp and the boundaries, as I said, 0 and 1. Wait. Perfect. So we can again play around with the parameters and observe how our effect changes. Move it around like we are moving the magnifying glass and increase and decrease magnification. Make it bigger or smaller. Everything works. Everything works perfect. OK. So we are done with the basic effect. And there is just one more thing. At the beginning of the video, you may have noticed the darkening of the image around the effect, which can be useful if we want to simulate something like a peephole in a door. We can achieve such an enhancement quite easily. First, we'll add two uniform parameters. Let's do it here. So first, uniform float crop edge with a hint range and the initial value, let's put it to 0. And the hint range again from 0 to 1 and step point 0 0.01. So this value will be needed to fine tune the edge at which we want to display the darkening color because it doesn't quite align perfectly. Do you remember the black ring we were getting rid of? It could probably be done with some calculation, but I thought it would be easier to simply define the boundary manually. And the second one would be the color. So vector 4, uh, crop color, and source color to get the color picker in the inspector and the initial value vector 4, uh, 0, 0, 0, 1, and semicolon. And this is the color we will use for darkening with the alpha channel, this one, needed for the final mix of the color and the original image. I've, uh, and I've set the default value to black, of course. OK, and we will add the last three lines to the code. Let's get back to the end of the uh, fragment function and add this. Uh, if crop edge is greater than zero, and this is greater than radius minus crop edge then display the pixel as the mix of the, or, the original color the crop color and uh, the alpha value as the weight uh, here we go all right uh, notice that the crop edge is set to zero as the default value. Where is it? Here. Uh, so when it happens, this additional effect is turned off right now. But now if I increase the crop edge, we can observe that here it is. And let's just make it quite around, around the magnifying glass. And let's try to change the alpha value here. OK, now it's darkened. Or if we want to make it some kind of green filter, we can change it here and decrease the alpha even more or increase. OK, I think that the black one was the best, I guess. All right. Here it is. Thank you very much for watching. And I hope you find plenty of uses for today's effect. I think we originally wanted to apply something similar in our game where the hero also looks through a peephole in the door, but for some reason we ended up dropping that idea. Anyway, uh, it's great that I can clarify this topic a bit in this way. So uh, take care, good luck with your projects 
and I'll see you in the next video.